Hi students, now we have to talk about anthropogenic evolution or evolution by anthropogenic sources. The meaning for anthropogenic is nothing but the evolution of new species because of human activities. So in some cases human activities also resulted in the formation of new species and that is called anthropogenic evolution. Okay, evolution due to human activities. Now here I am taking one of the examples of natural selection and which industrial melanism. What is industrial melanism? Here in England there are two types of mass. Or actually you can say there were two types of mass in the past before industrialization. The name of the moth that is Edward moth having white with the sprinkles of we have black dots. That's why it's called pepper mark. The name of the mark is still vitularia. And this concept, industrial melanism, was studied experimentally by a person by name Bernard Kettlewell in 1950s. Now, here, there are different areas in England, you know that but Dorset area, free from industries. Birmingham city where you have more number of industries. Now what would happen because of the soot and the smoke let out from the industries, the background of the trees, for example the tree trunks became black in color. In order to suit with the black background, the normal white colored mark had been changed into a black colored mark for camouflage and a little later for camouflage. So evolution of darker forms or natural selection of darker forms in response to industrial pollution is called industrial melanism. So the darker forms were selected more and more by the nature that is a process of natural selection. So they were adapted to live, survive and produce more progenies. So a new species of darker forms of this mark evolved and that development is called what is known as industrial melanism. That's why I simply say natural selection of darker forms or the evolution of darker forms in response to industrial pollution is called industrial melanism. Okay, now this industrial melanism is the classical example for natural selection. That's also an important question. So industrial, actually there is a industrial melanism is a classical example for natural selection. I mentioned all the name of the moth, Bistrin vitularia. Before industrialization in England, the black, the light colored moths, we can say white as well, no, black and light colored moths were present commonly before industrialization. Now in the pre-industrialization period, as we have the background witnessed the white color wall of the buildings, now the white masks were prevalent more and more during pre-industrialization period. Industrialization period, that is in 1850s. So there were no industries. There was no release of smoke or soot from the industries. So the background was more or less white in color. Or if you are taking the tree trunk more or less having the light bark. So during the pre-industrialization period, the light background, the white background of the wall of the what is called the buildings favored. That is what is called the white man because they were not identified. They were not spotted by the predators like the birds. That's why they were more in number during the pre-industrialization period. During the post-industrialization period, when we had, for example, 1920s, 1920s, there is marked by more number of industries, particularly in the case of Birmingham City. So during the post-industrialization period, what will happen? The tree trunk, the bark, became black in color. Due to the deposition of the smoke or soap 
let out from the industries. So they become dark. So if the white mark was present on the background with the dark, immediately they would be caught. They would be caught by the predators like the birds. That's why during the post industrialization period, the number of white masks were decreasing. But what about the black? The black moth camouflage. Camouflage. With what is called the dark bark of the tree. Camouflage means cryptic coloration. Cryptic coloration. This is what is called camouflage. That is a development of color in the organism in matching with the environmental background. That is called as a cryptic coloration. So the black mass camouflage with the dark bark of the tree. That is why they were not actually spotted by the predators. They were escaping. What about the white moth? So there is a contrast between the white moth and the black background. So they were easily identified and spotted by the predators. That is why the number is decreasing. So this shows that in a population, okay, organism that can adapt to the change in environmental conditions can survive. So they multiply and produce more progenics in a population, resulting in increased number of population through natural selection. So here the darker forms are selected and allowed to survive because of their adaptation to the changing environmental conditions. So here we have the selective force, the natural selection, selected only the black moth and which was adjusted with matching with the background that is developing what is called camouflage that is nothing but the cryptic coloration in matching with the environmental conditions. This is called industrial melanism. Simply the definition is natural selection of darker forms or simply evolution of darker forms in response to industrial pollution. Now, in 1950s, after 1950s, what would happen? An amendment was made in English Parliament. What to reduce? That is the industries. And because of the reduction in industries, the release of soot and smoke decreased. Automatically, the environment is returning back to its normal conditions. So, Bernard Cattrall observed there were more white forms after 1950s because of reduction in industries. So anyway, it is the environment that is a nature, so as the right type of individuals, which individuals are allowed to survive and which are not allowed to survive. That is what we call anthropogenics. This is because of human activities. We only created the industries. Now what are the other examples for anthropogenic evolution? For example, we have developed herbicides and pesticides to kill the weeds as well as what we have actually, that is a pest. In course of time, what would happen? This is a human activity. In course of time, what would happen? Automatically, resistant varieties to herbicide and pesticide develop. So, origin of new species, the human activity. Another example, we are taking antibiotics to just to kill the microorganisms to prevent the development of the disease. When you are taking the same antibiotic for a longer duration, a resistant variety is developed and which will not be killed by that particular antibiotic. So, a resistant new species developed. This is also an example for human activities. Human activities an example for anthropogenic evolution. Evolution of new species by human activities is called anthropogenic evolution. So these are all some of the examples we have. Even in the case of DDT, you know the point. We are using DDT to kill the mosquito larvae. Now we have developed mosquito which are resistant to DDT. So it is an example for anthropogenic evolution. Formation of new species because of human activities. Okay, that is the board with reference to anthropogenic evolution.
artificial selection is also a kind of anthropogenic evolution. Now it is nothing but the byproduct of human exploitation of fast oceans, fishes, and others such as herbicides, pesticides, and drugs. I mentioned already use of herbicides or pesticides resulted in or being harm resistant varieties, new species. Likewise, also the drugs, antibiotics. And similarly, while we are exploiting the oceans, in order to just change their habit, in order to change with the change in environmental conditions, they have developed modifications. Automatically, they are selected by nature, resulting in the formation of a new species. So, anyway, artificial selection is the byproduct of human exploitation activities of forest extensive utilization, oceans fisheries and others such as herbicides, pesticides and drugs. You know, for hundreds of years, human has selected various dogs, all of which are the variants of a single species of dog. So, when man produces actually a new species within a short period of time, why don't a nature can produce species? Because while the nature with its vast resources and a long duration can produce new species within a just actually having longer duration within a short period of time we can produce new species likewise nature with its vast resources and a longer duration can produce new species through natural selection so man can produce new species so also in compared to human beings, the nature can also produce new species by means of natural selection. That's about the artificial selection. Now the next one, what is adaptive radiation? This is another evolutionary process which results in the formation of new species. How? The new species is diverged from a single ancestral form. From a single ancestral form, many forms have diverged. What form? And once they form, because of the change in environment condition, they invade, they invade a new environment. So that they become adapted to the newly invaded habitat. In the changing habit, they change their habit also and adapt it to the newly invaded habitat in which they enter. This process is called adaptive radiation. Okay, so process which produces new species, that species is being diverged from a single ancestral form and that form is adapted to the newly invaded habitat. From a single ancestral form, many forms have been diverged according to the situations, according to the new habit. Now, this adaptive radiation is mostly that is seen or exemplified by closely related groups, mostly exemplified by mostly related groups, which evolve in a short period of time. So, mostly seen in the case of a that is a uh, highly evolved groups, closely related groups, which evolved within a short period of time. Now we have many examples, the major three examples are adaptive radiation seen in the case of Australian marsupials, and another one Darwin's finches, and the third one North American placental mammals. I'll show that one from a single ancestral form, many forms have been diverged diversified or diverged. So that is called actually adaptive radiation, evolutionary divergence from a single stock. Many species have evolved. I will represent in the form of a simple picture or a diagram. You can understand what is adaptive radiation. First I will take with the reference to the Australian marsupials. Marsupials you know that one the poultry mammals mostly restricted to the island that is what we have Australia. Some marsupials, the poultry mammals, like kangaroo, also present in North America. 
rarely, but mostly found in Australia. Now, from a simple ancestor form, many marsupials have been diversified. I will represent some of the examples of diversified or divergent Australian marsupials. Here I have given an example for adaptive radiation in relation to the Australian marsupials, the pouched mammals. They have a pouch or a marsupial. From a single ancestral marsupial, we have developed a Tasmanian wolf. Tasmanian tiger cat, marsupial mouse, koala, this is what is called Australian teddy bear, kangaroo, you know the pouch mammal, best example, the marsupial mole, rat like animal, the umber, a bear like animal. So, this is an example for adaptive radiation seen in the case of what is called Australian marsupials. The same is also seen in the case of North American placental mammals, the true mammals. From a single ancestral placental mammal, ancestral placental mammal. This is another subclass, you know that one the placental mammal. We have the formation of what is called wolf. We have the formation of a cat. This is called bog cat. Bog cat. We have what is called mouse normal moss. Then there is no koala here. Then gangre is also not there. We have also for example bandicoot. Bandicoot. Bandicoot also we have in the case of marsupials. Here the true bandicoot, the placental mammal. You know that one, the huge rat like animal. Then also we have the mole. Then other animals also. So we have cat, bobbed cat, the mouse, the mole, the bandicoot, etc. They also we have other types also with reference to the placental mammal. So from a single ancestral placental mammal, we have evolved the different forms to suit the environmental conditions where they invaded the new habitat. This is another example. We have also the Darwin's finches. I will explain now in a separate way what are Darwin's finches, etc. What are Darwin's finches? When Darwin visited the island Galapagos Island, which is called as the living laboratory of evolution, living laboratory of evolution, he collected different varieties of one a sparrow. That sparrow is called Darwin's finch. Now, actually the ancestral form of this Darwin's finches reached the Galapagos Island from America, South America and then settled and evolved into 14 different recognized species. 14 species. And these 14 species evolved during the time and they are differing in size, that is the shape, the big shape, that is what we have, that is uh, behavior, etc. They evolve during that time. So 14 species evolve from a single species and maintain their identity there and they have different size, shape in their body and also with the reference to the beak, the beak is also different in shape. Now, there are two genera. One genera of this pair is called Geosphalisa. Another genera, sorry, another genus is Camarinus. So, one genus Geosphalisa. Another genus Camarinus. But all these genus together call us what we have Darwin's finches. Now, they develop what is called the different size and form in their being. Part 4 which enable the different species of this what is called Darwin's finches to utilize different sources of food. So mainly we are talking about the big shape. The big shape is normally different in all these 14 different varieties. 
Some of the beams are just actually to collect grains from. That is what's called the brown, brown finch. Or collecting what's called the nectar. Or capturing the insects. Or just sucking the blood from the lizard varieties. So they are different in their function too. So a change in big shape in different species are utilized normally to just utilize the different sources of food. What are the different sources of food that they had? Maybe in the form of insect, maybe in the form of seeds, or maybe in the form of what is called nectar collector from cactus flower, nectar eater, cactus flower. You know that one the zero fights, cactus flower, nectar collector, or sucking the blood from iguanas, collecting blood from iguanas, a large lizard, iguanas. So, they have different resources of food. For collecting the different resources of food, the big shape has been changed. Now, normally change in big shape correlated with a gene. What is called AXL1. This is a gene, AXL1 gene. This gene present the DNA of the Darwin's finches related to the big sheep. So, in the ancestral form, so the ancestral form is a nut eater. The ancestral form is a nut eater. From this nut eater only, we have formed the different types, evolved the different types of finches. See, when there was a mild mutation in the gene AXL1, that leads to a phenotypic change in the big shape of Darwin's finches. So, a change in the genetic material because of mutation altering the phenotype with reference to the big shape of Darwin's finches. And such variants are selected by nature. We already seen the mutation is always strictly subjected to natural selection. Now, these forms had a beneficial mutation. That's why they were favored they were favored by natural selection. So this is an example. Now, other two examples for what I mentioned about. Just like, see, the North American placental mammals and the Australian poultry mammals. Now the Australian poultry mammals, the North American what is called the placental mammals, these two are the subgroups of mammals. They have also adapted in a similar way. They also evolved in a similar way and adapted to the particular environment with reference to locomotor skill, with reference to the food behavior, etc. So, both the Australian plus, sorry, mass fields and the North American president mammals have also evolved in the same manner and adapted to the environmental conditions, adapted to the habitat in which they are normally invading. Now, what is happening? So, both the placental mammals, what we have from North America, and the marsupial mammals from Australia, they have normally evolved 100 million years ago from an ancestral form, and then separated from each other. Those separated from each other because of the temporal and geographical separation, they have their own structural similarity and what we call there is mode of life, the way of life in which they are living. So both have been separated 100 million years ago from ancestral form and each one is leading, each lineage we can say, the descendants, each lineage is leading an independent life separately. Though they have been separated from what is called the temporal or geographical separation. Temporal means seasonal separation. They have been actually produced various new species living in a similar habitat with a similar way of life. They produce various tribes living in a similar habitat with a similar mode of life. This is one what we you can see. So, when more than one adaptive radiation in in an isolated geographic area, 
a more than one adapted radiation in a in an isolated geographical area having that is also same structural and functional similarity it is because of convergent evolution okay with more than one adapted radiation in an what is called isolated geographical area having same structural and functional similarity it is because of convergent evolution so i mentioned about the marsupials as well as what we have the present mammals of north america and both actually living in similar what is called habitat with a similar way of life if you are taking for example mentioned about what is called actually due to convergent evolution and we have more than one adaptation that is adaptation of both that is what we have two adaptations here one adaptive radiation of marsupials another one the adaptive radiation of you see present in mammals I will compare that one referring to the convergent evolution. see there is more than one adaptive radiation in an isolated geographical area having just a similar having normally same structure and function similarity having same structural and function similarity it is because of convergent evolution so the living together that is what we have in the same habitat the same way of life so both coming together for convergent evolution so we have two adaptive radiation of two different groups but are living together in a similar area with a similar mode of life okay now actually the resemblances what we have in the shape that is what we have the locomotory mode or we have what's for the feeding and forage habitat foraging means the way they are just capturing they are getting their food procuring their food foraging so these are all superimposed lying over on different reproductive abilities on different reproduction so superimposed on different reproduction superimposed means though they have different modes of reproduction but they have actually structural similarities living together in an area where they invaded so living together in the same habitat and also in the way of life except reproduction so this reflects what we have this feature reflects what we have the distinctive evolutionary relationship okay so living together in a habitat so in a habitat the way of life also the same but the nature of reproduction is different now in australia we have more than 200 species of marsupials with a few species of placental mammals now the australian marsupials undergo or undergo adaptive radiation in australia to occupy diverse habitat the same way just like the north american placental mammals where they just naturally radiated across north america so that is about and with the comparison between these two and both exhibit convergent evolution 